Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Grissom, and I'd like to invite you to a conversation about your Kundalini awakening experience. And in, uh, on this day before Valentine's Day, I would like to discuss with you uh, the expression of divine love. And, and this, this, this is a this covers a lot. Um, I won't be able to cover everything uh, in, inside of this this program. Uh, this program will be for an hour this time instead of the normal hour and a half, um, partly because I want to give people a chance to call in and partly because I don't want to take too much of your time, you know, by by you know giving you this this information. I, I want you to be able to at least metabolize what it is that I'm that I'm giving you. Uh, you know, so maybe maybe not such a big mouthful. <laughs> I would like to uh to thank everybody who is listening today. I'd like to thank those who listen in the archives. Um not another time. I would like to to give the call in number. This is the guest or the yeah. So if if you want to call in uh and ask a question or or say hello, anything that you'd like to do. Uh, the number is 347-934-0026. So the number is 347-934-0026. You can call in at any time. I will leave the, the typical last half hour of the broadcast for... for uh, People who have questions, and it can be questions about any of the shows that we've done. It doesn't have to strictly pertain to this one. Uh, so uh, I just want everyone to know that uh, that uh, Centara is fine. She's not going to be assisting this time because she is on vacation in Poland. <laughs> She's on a skiing vacation, and so uh, blessings to her and her family as they go out and have a, a good time in the snow. And I hope everyone is having in the in the northern hemisphere is having a good time in the snow in the southern hemisphere i hope everyone is having a great summer um, so i know in the northern hemisphere a lot of people have been snowed in and uh especially on the east coast of the united states and in some other areas and i just want to to let you know that that is an invitation for love to be given for the the love that we have for complete strangers and, and, and our neighbors and our families and friends. And so so this show is about love. It is about the divine quality of love from a Kundalini perspective. Kundalini, as, as I've discussed in previous shows, expands a person's horizon, uh, mental horizon, emotional horizon, a physical horizon, uh, psychological horizon, and spiritual horizons. It expands the, all five of the human expressions. And love, love is, is a foundation expression for all human expression. Uh, and so as as the kundalini comes into the body and begins to to rewire the body and reformat the body and and reconfigure the body what happens with the love is the love is expanded and it's expanded into each of the five facets of the human expressions and so for instance the 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 foundation uh, of, of love within the, the emotional expression will be extremely enhanced and extremely uh, um, amplified. But same, same with the physical, the mental, and, and, and the, uh, the psychological and the spiritual. So the foundation for all human expression is love. And it goes beyond human. It, it also goes into to the animals, the plants, the uh, you know, the earth itself. Uh, love is not something that is peculiar to humans, although humans may kind of see it that way, but you can also see it in the in in the, the teachings 
that the animals give to us, the teachings of a of a pet, a dog or a cat or any of the various pets that we may have. Uh, love is not always based on the need for food. The need for food is 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 necessary, you know, for life to exist. Uh, we we all consume food and and convert it to energy. So food is necessary, but it is not the basis for love. Love goes beyond need, and I'd like you to consider that. Love goes beyond the need for anything. Love is stronger than that. Love is what holds our bodies together, you know, if we look at the physical aspect. Uh, you know, there are, there are trillions and trillions and trillions of cells in the, in the average human body. And they're all living in agreement with one another, working towards the same goal of the sustaining life. And one person, there are more cells living in agreement in one person than the total population of this world, of this earth. And they're all living in harmony, for the most part. There are some cells, you know, some uh, cancer cells or things of that, which, which may not be living in harmony. But most of the cells are living in harmony. They're living the integrity of love. And as the bladder works with the kidneys and the lungs work, the, work with the heart, and all the various body parts work with each other in a distinct and collaborative effort to keep us alive, the gift of our life is from love. Love is this force. It's this force that binds our communities of different cells into complete and distinct individuals. And this is love. The qualities of strength and courage, forgiveness, compassion, gratitude, joy, abundance, honesty, trust. These are all some of the facets of, of love as a binding spiritual force. When the Kundalini is activated and this love is amplified uh, into an amazingly abundant, outside of the veil, typical expression, uh, it, it goes even further. And it enhances it enhances our lives in ways that really only people with the Kundalini can really appreciate. But it is also for those people who do not have the Kundalini, and it it is the the f magnetic force of the divine that calls everything to itself, like you know, like the light to the insect. The insect must go towards that light. It doesn't know why. It just knows that it must get into that light. And divine love works the same way. People yearn to have it. They're compelled to have it, and they don't know why. But they know they must go there. And so you'll have the millions and millions and millions of people who have reached that stage in their life where they go to the go to the ashram or they go to the church or they go to the temple and they pray to the to the divine uh, that corresponds with their culture and their religion they pray and they and they work to have that divine relationship and this relationship is based in love and and yet it's a love that surpasses uh, the qualities of need, the qualities of desire, the qualities of attachment. Much of our love on this world is corresponding to, to those qualities of need and, and attachment and so forth. With the Kundalini divine love, especially with the, with the person that is having the Kundalini, this can, this can come to you as bliss. And bliss itself is 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 as much the response of the person having the divine love experience as it is the divine love experience giving it to a person a oneness a, a convergence occurs. 
So typically, within a kundalini context, as a person is reading a book, listening to music, talking with another person, even watching television, uh, an act of love or, or a, a, a level of information can be given to you that triggers a bliss response. And a Kriya, as we've discussed in, in, in other programs, a Kriya is an automatic uh, movement of the body uh, given to a person by the Kundalini. A Kriya of love will occur. And, and sometimes it's just your, your eyes being squeezed shut and, and tears uh, rolling out of your eyes. Your, your, your chest will heave and constrict. And a level of love will be generated by you that is stronger and tactile than almost anything you've ever experienced. Uh, bliss and ecstatic love from a kundalini perspective is very, very different than what we normally see love as being or feel love as being. And I want to, to really encourage people to understand that. Uh, as as the bliss comes into the person, you lose control to a large degree of of the way your body responds to this bliss, to this divine uh, uh, infusion of love. You lose control, and and you, you do so with complete abandon. It's not like you're, you're having the control wrenched from you. Sometimes. It's that way. I've had the bliss come to me uh, when I'm giving information at a seminar. And, jeez, you know. I asked the Kundalini before, I said, please don't give me bliss during the seminar. I, gotta, I have to talk to these people. <laughs> and, of course, you know, I'll say something and it'll trigger the bliss. And, wham, there I am in front of a group of people having bliss, tears streaming down my eyes, just evening. And, Sometimes it, it goes further than bliss. It goes into ecstasy. And from there, I just don't really have a memory. When you come back from that experience, uh, you, you don't have a memory of, of what you were just doing. Um, it's not as, it, it feels really, really good. It's an incredibly beautiful, wonderful feeling. Uh, and it does it does have uh, physical, visual ramification on the body. Uh, and so, you know, who am I to complain? But, you know, I'm, it, it, it's very strong. It's very, very strong and beautiful. And it is part of the reason uh, that many, many people want to come to the Kundalini so that they can have that that love, they can have that bliss, they can have that ecstasy. Um, far and away over the the other aspects of the Kundalini, you know, the the psychic skills, the healing skills, the the exalted skills, or as the Sanskriti people put it, the Siddic skills, which you know, I get a lot of the young people calling me up and saying, "Hey." Kusum, if I get the Kundalini, will I have superpowers? Far and away, over the idea of having superpowers or having leverage over other people. Uh, a person who comes into the Kundalini with love uh, and, and the desire to give love and the openness to receive love this is what will form an activation sequence far greater than a person wanting to come into the Kundalini for special powers. Um, love is the cornerstone, really, of Kundalini awakening. The more love you have, the less fear you have. The more love you have, the more trust you have. The more trust you have, you know, fear doesn't really have a place to come into that. This is why, as much as I can, 
I, I do promote a devotional practice towards the awakening of the Kundalini. I know that it's not for everyone. Um, people have to reach a certain level in their in their emotional development uh, before they can they can uh, express themselves in a devotional way. Uh, but with the Kundalini and, and the person who is wanting to have the Kundalini, even while you have it, while it's coursing through you, being devotional can be extremely, extremely helpful. And devotion itself is an aspect of love. It's, it's a giving of love. It's a giving of oneself through the auspices of love to the Kundalini. And I don't care if you're giving devotion to a tree. If you know, if the tree uh, signifies in some way Kundalini for you, and you're giving devotion to the tree, well, you're giving devotion to the Kundalini at the same time. And, and so, whatever you placed uh, your your focus of Kundalini to be on, whether it's a crucifix, a crock, a cross, or a or a statue, or a plant, or a tree, or a certain animal, or another human. It doesn't matter. It's the devotion towards the kundalini that counts. Uh, many people will give uh, devotion to a guru. And that's fine, as long as that guru is representing the kundalini to them. And that's the important, that's, that's the caveat, that's the thing, is it has to represent the kundalini to the person within the devotional matrix. That devotion is a form of divine love that is an invitation and a receptivity at the same time. As you give, so do you receive. As you receive, so do you give. Okay. Uh, in this in this uh, short program, I would like to to invite many of you to open your hearts further than you ever have. Whether or not you have Kundalini actively present in your system, uh, actively expressing as an awakening format of Kundalini, uh, you can still open your heart uh, in a way that that is greater than you normally would, and, and, and I think this day, the day before Valentine's Day, because so much of a focus now within the commercial markets and the and the you know the the uh, the the couples uh, uh, portions of the population, you know, they're, they're, it's very it's a very good focus right now. For love to be discussed, and I would, I would, you know, prefer that love be be discussed all the time, and and not just on a special day like like Valentine's Day. And it is, love is love is expressed quite. I mean, every day people are expressing love, and um, so this is good. And, and you know, let us let us increase that. Let us continue and increase the amount of love that we speak of and that we act from as we interact with our society. Uh, within the the opening of love and a kundalini context, your current parameters of what you have an expectation of love to be is expanded. So if you're a person who is who is used to expressing love in a very distinct and, and, and particular way, uh, the kundalini will compel you to expand that comfort zone. So you you, you know as as you feel this compelling drive to expand your comfort zone uh, with regards to expressing love, you may feel a bit confused about what is occurring. And I want you to understand, especially, you know, the kundalini awakened people or activated people, this is the kundalini compelling you to do this. And often it will compel you to express love 
in a very, very personal way to people you don't know. To the homeless person standing on the corner. To the little child that looks lost. To the elderly person that that may be having difficulty crossing the street. Maybe you can walk with them across the street. To To that person who you can see is very, very hungry and yet they don't have enough money and, and they're digging for coins at the, at, the, at the grocery store line. And you might just be compelled to reach into your own purse or wallet or pocket and give them the money that they need to, to make that purchase of food for themselves or for their family. This is something that is not usual in our society, unfortunately. And Kundalini pushes you to expand your expression of love towards uh, giving aid and assistance to those in need. Okay? Uh, This is also a part of the Kundalini service. What I espouse as, as kundalini service are really actions motivated by the divine love that comes from the kundalini. And this, ex- this expands far beyond just human interaction. This goes straight into uh, what the, the, uh, the Sanskrit people call ahimsa. That's a- A-H-I-M-S-A, ahimsa. And that is to that is to do no harm. Don't kill anything. Which you know, in in, in of itself, is a little bit uh, flawed, in a way, because every time you take a step or breathe the air, you may be you know having an organism come in, and and just the fact that you breathe it in, you may have killed it. So, but I would say I would translate it as being do, do no purposeful harm. You know, what you don't know you're doing, you don't know you're doing it. So, in a way, you have a, a level of the innocence of a child with that. And I don't care how old your body is. There are still many, many traits of, of a child in an adult uh, human body. So, as you walk the land around you as, you, as you take steps and as you see life around you, from the plants to the animals to the insects, don't go out of your way to kill them. I don't care if you like them or not. Uh, most most people are programmed to accept certain forms of life and to reject other forms of life. Uh, some people have a problem with rodents or mice or rats or guinea pigs or hamsters or you know little scurrying creatures and. And some people, unfortunately, will go out of their way to try to kill them uh, on sight, try to run over them with their car. And I'm going to suggest that within a kundalini expanded format of love, expressing his ahimsa, that you will not do this. You will not step on that bug. You won't swap that fly. You won't try to kill the bee or the wasp. You'll, you know, if it's trapped in your house, you can just try to open the door and let it out. Or the spider, you know, you put it, you know, catch it in a cup and and uh, take it outside. You don't ever use a pesticide to to kill anything that way. You don't go out of your way to to respond to the programming that oh, that certain plant in my garden is a weed and therefore it must be killed. No, no, the kundalini will not support this. You will need to. Realign your programming with regards to what it is to love. And all life will be loved by the Kundalini Awakened person. All life is loved. All life is, a, is a, an expression of the all that is, of the divine within you. And even though we may not know the qualities of what that plant represents or or you know that it that it does this or that or it has its you know certain uh expression from our 
level of human understanding. It has a right to be there. It has a right to live just as you do. And the same with the bug or the spider or the snake, uh, you know, or the tree. Even the, the germs and the viruses have a right to be there. When you have the Kundalini in and you experience that, that wave of bliss for love of all things, and, and when you have the spinal sweep, and some of the, some of you who who watch the videos that I put out on YouTube, uh, they, you understand what a spinal sweep is. The energy surges from the base of the spine and and up through the spine and out the top of the head. When you have that spinal sweep, you are one with creation, and I mean all creation. From, from the tiniest piece of sand or dust to the most uh, elaborate uh, form of life, you are one with that. You are merged with the divine force that has created our existence, that has created this world, created this cosmos. You are one with that. We, we have that amazing capacity to have the Kundalini and join in the divine matrix. And the love, the divine love that comes through that is what causes that to happen. In a way, you could, you could see kundalini the, itself. The, the word kundalini could also be seen and, and understood as divine love because it changes you. And it changes you towards a, a a person that has a wider level of of acceptance of life and consciousness, spirituality and grace. It's not all about the body convulsing with love, which does occur. It's not all about that at all. It's it's about a a change and a transformation of your ideology of life. It's about changing the um, the expression of your parameters and programs of what acceptable love is to be. It's not about what we do, you know, with our reproductive organs. It's not about who we choose as a partner for for um, physical love expression. It's about love itself. The love of God, the love of grace, the love of the divine that is streaming outward from your heart. And in many ways, you, uh, the, the Kundalini Awakening person will feel their heart being pulled. Feel their heart being pulled uh, to give service to a certain person that they're passing on the street or an accident scene that they might be driving by. This is as much uh, a celebration of love as uh, the love of a, of a child for a parent or a parent for a child. You begin to see your fellow human being your fellow mortal, and by that I mean animals and plants and, and insects and fish. You begin to see your, your fellow human and your fellow mortal as actual brothers and sisters. In, in, a, in a very real way, uh, the, the Native American Indians uh, would practice a form of, 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 of a broadened love that accepted the, uh, the fellow mortals as actual sentient beings that have their own life path, that that have their own agenda and and you know are here sharing this land with us. So the Kundalini will give you that type of a response. And and I want you to be prepared for that. I want you to to respond to it in a in a positive way. In a in a very positive way. Let yourself know that it's okay. Give yourself permission uh, that it's okay that uh, 
let this be given, let this be be given uh, to others by you. Now, I'm going to ask one of you to call in because I don't know if I'm being heard by anybody. <laughs> I feel like I'm uh, talking to a to a phone line into into oblivion here. So, if somebody could call in just to let me know that it's working, because you know we've had some challenges with Blog Talk Radio here. So, if you can call in at three four seven. Nine three four zero zero two six. It should come up on my switchboard here, and I'll be able to to at least get some uh, clarification on that. Uh, so please, somebody, anybody who may be listening and is near a phone, uh, give me a call. With the divine love, anything that you see that even smacks of love will begin to amplify itself within you. So you'll find yourself crying at maybe some of the, you know, inopportune moments. You'll feel yourself begin to heave, you'll feel your breathing increase, and you'll feel the tears begin to form in your eyes. This is okay. If at all possible, just let it go. Don't don't, uh, try to stop it or control it. Uh, one thing I do want to be clear about is sometimes when the Kundalini divine love begins to to gently push its way into a person's expressions, it will follow the channels that we typically reserve for sadness, for expressing sadness. And it uses those same channels uh, for its expression through the person. And so at first you may feel, oh my gosh, I'm, why am I sad about this? And and you're actually, it, it really doesn't end up being that way, but it's the only reference point you will have for the surge of love in this way. Uh, so be advised of that and, and know that. And, and allow yourself to have this bliss, to have this love. Uh, tears have to happen. As I've mentioned in other, in other broadcasts, tears must happen with this. Tears are an, a release valve for the pressure of love that builds in a, in a human being. Bliss and ecstasy and, and these forms of divine love when experienced by the human being the human can only stand it for a very short period of time unless, you know, over the years with their awakened kundalini, they can have it for longer and longer periods of time. This is very, very strong. And it will only give a person short bursts of itself, the divine love, uh, in ways that, I mean, you can have it every day, but it will just last a few seconds, maybe a little longer. Uh, you know, very short periods of time, uh, rel- you know, in, in relation to uh, other forms of love, because it is so strong, and it will just, you know, it has the ability to, to fry the the bio neural circuitry of a human being, and so it only comes for short bursts of time, just enough for that person to feel the love and for that divine love to do its transformative work on the emotional body of the human being. And so this is something that that you want to look at and that you want to be aware of. Let it come. Often you will want to heave. Your your chest will constrict and it will you'll feel it wanting to con, to, to to convulse in the way we have tears convulse when we're crying or when we're sobbing. Uh, Sometimes you will need to sob with love, with love. And, you know, for for people who aren't used to to sobbing at all, even when they cry, this can come as a very strange development. and, And I want you to know that it's normal. It's normal for people to have this. It's normal to sob with joy. Kundalini brings us. This is part of the gift 
of Kundalini. And even though you haven't experienced it before, let it come. Do not restrict its expression through you. Now, I understand if you're at a business meeting or, or a, you know, some other kind of social event that, that doesn't allow you to sob with joy, the, the Kundalini will typically not bring it to you at that time. But if it does, just maybe you can excuse yourself, go into the bathroom or something, and, and let that heaving do its work. Part of this is the transformation of of your soul, of your body, of your emotional body. Uh, not so much of your mental mind, except in the way that that you think love should be. That will definitely be changed. That will be changed in a way that allows you to to mentally have this expansion. So You'll feel it typically in your heart first. You'll feel the love begin to form in your heart. You'll feel your chest begin to constrict a little bit. Tears will begin to form in your eyes. And you'll feel this this, this large vibration and energy of love begin to assert itself within you to the point where it may just squeeze your eyes shut Uh you know, like a person who is thinking really, really, really hard. They're trying to remember something or thinking of something. And uh, and it'll squeeze your eyes shut and just kind of leave you in that space for a while. That's a Kriya. Your body will have that Kriya as the divine love uh, pulls through it. So this is normal. This is normal. You are not sad. You are not depressed. You are not having a uh, uh, an unnatural action happening to you. This is not a medical event. This is not a psychological event. So much to say that it, it doesn't require that you go to a healthcare professional. I know a woman, uh, she, she, uh, she, she runs a store here in town. You know, I won't mention her name. Uh, she had a Kundalini awakening. And, you know, her spinal sweep was so strong that she was in bliss, literally. Uh, not not bliss so much, but she was so happy. She was far happier than she ever was before. And she would have bliss surges. And she would have them in front of her friends. And she had these, Gosh, you know, for two or three weeks, she was just this amazingly different person that her friends began to worry about her. Oh, gosh, did you see, we'll call her Sally. Did you see Sally the other day? You say, yeah, yeah, I saw Sally. God, she's so different now. I know, I know, I don't know what's come over her. Well, she seems so happy. I just, it's just not right. <laughs> it's just not right. And they orchestrated a medical intervention and had her placed in a psychological unit uh, here in town. And she stayed there for, I think, six months because she was too happy. She was too joyful. She had too much love. And it scared her friends. And so, you know, with that lesson being given, um, sometimes, you know, out of the out of the the friendship that you have with the people in your life, uh, you need to know this. You need to know this, and and uh, you need to to not be in a position where where your kundalini can can undergo, you know, that type of a treatment from your, your friends and family. This is more something that the family would do with a with a son or a daughter or a or a, a spouse or brother or sister. Uh because you're so happy and you're so joyful and your love is so strong, it may really contradict the person that you have been before. And that may be a danger signal 
for those because now you're so different that you're you're not what people are used to, to seeing around them and and so do your best to mitigate that type of a response. Now you may think, well well Christian you just told me not to resist this and I do. I, I do encourage you not to resist it. But also I, I can en- also encourage you to be sensitive to the levels of acceptance around you. So if you were an, if you were in, a, in an extreme household, uh, a person you know who's born in a, in a household that has religious views of a certain variety, that a an extreme expression of love would not be appropriate. Well, then I want you to do your best to be alone when you're having your extreme expressions of love. Do your best. The Kundalini knows you, and so it will know uh, what is occurring and what the dynamics are. But I also want you to take responsibility and, you know, go into the bathroom, go into your bedroom, go into a place, go into your car, go into a place where you can feel uh, safe to have these extreme expressions of love and they are extreme i must i must repeat it they are an extreme expression of love now i'm looking at my switchboard here and i don't see anybody calling in so i have a feeling that this is recording but for some reason it's not going out i didn't get the countdown that blog talk radio usually gives you a countdown your show will start in such and such minutes and so I have a feeling this is just going straight into the archives, and I think I'm I'm good with that. I'm good with that. So, so hello everybody who who is listening in the future. Extend your love into everything around you, minus those who might be upset by it. What is happening is as the Kundalini changes you the love of the kundalini is also part of the transformative energetic rewiring of your body. So not only is your expression of love being amplified, but the energetic expression of your aura is also being amplified. So as the kundalini extends your aura further out from your body, you become that bright light. Well, the love, the love that is the kundalini and is what you are becoming also extends further out so in a way you don't have to to go into seizures of love in front of other people you can just stand next to them and by just standing next to them you realize that or they realize that you know you're not really acting any different but boy is there a lot of love coming from you you know and this this is a safer response for for those people in your life who may be sensitive to any kind of behavioral change to to have this and this keeps you out of the psych ward as well there is a such thing believe it or not as being too happy in our in, in the western society so just be advised of that uh and once again as i've mentioned in other other uh, broadcasts Kundalini people will often want to just go out and be alone. They'll want to go into a forest or go into a cave or go into a jungle or just go away. And it's not because the people are bothering them, but sometimes it's it's for their safety, for the safety of having the Kundalini without uh, being interrupted by the misinterpretation of a society that doesn't recognize Kundalini. So, if that is happening to you, then then I encourage you to find a place to be alone, to find a place to be away from people. Maybe not all the time, 24/7, but maybe so. You know, if it works for you, if you can if you can live that lifestyle, then then I encourage you to do so. If you have a job, if you have a family, if you have these other things, then this is not a lifestyle that you can support. Uh, if you're if you're living with a spouse or you have a uh, a loved one uh, who 
doesn't know about the Kundalini and doesn't necessarily respect its effect on the human being, well, that that is more of a challenge. Then you have to be a lot more careful, um, because uh, you know you love them too, and you just you just have more of of an energetic. A divine expression of love than they may be currently able to express or receive at this time. And so you want to be very careful and very considerate with how much love you blast at them. <laughs> and even then, you know, just even standing next to them, you just need to, to really understand, okay, okay, you know, this person doesn't understand this. And so you may not be able to express yourself as you would like to express yourself to them. I've had to do this, you know, when standing with people or talking with people. I I can't go up and tell them how wildly, how much love I feel for them, how much loving consideration. God, I'm so happy you're alive and breathing this air, and I'm honored to be on this world with you. They just don't get it. <laughs> That's when they start reaching for the cell phones. Nine one one. So be advised that even though you're having bliss, they are not having bliss. They are not having this expression of divine love, and so for them, it becomes scary. So please be advised of that. Uh, you don't want to scare people with your love. And it is, amazingly enough, it is possible to do that. And let's talk about your body and the love with the, of the Kundalini coursing through it. It will want you to do certain things with your life. It will want you to help other people a lot more. It will want you to not kill things arbitrarily. It will also want you to, to begin to take care of yourself. You will be compelled to exercise. And if you're anti-exercise or have been for a while, this is going to come as a shock to you. But this is divine love telling you that your body needs to be exercised. And so I want you to go ahead and start to exercise. Start slow. Start slow. If, if, if you're not a, a jogger, then walk. Just walk, uh, you know, a mile or two every day if you can. You know, walk and, and, and then try to extend that as you continue the practice. Um, so it will want you to exercise and compel you to exercise because it loves you and it wants the divine you to be housed in a body that can hold that divine you. Uh, you know, couch potatoes, you know, it may require that you get off the couch and you, and you start a, living your life in a different way. And the same with the food that you eat. If, you're, if you've are if you been a, a vegetarian all your life and and um, all of a sudden the kundalini says, well, I want you to eat this meat. I want you to eat the meat. It knows about your proclivities towards ahimsa, and, and it, it knows about those things, but it also knows that your body needs this type of protein and that this protein is available for you in your society. And you can thank and you can have the love and the gratitude uh, for, the, for the creature that, that is giving you that food, uh, it, the food of itself, the food of its life. It's giving you that. And it's... It's a gift that in many ways has already been given. And so, you know, the Kundalini is saying, partake of this. You need these vitamins. You need these enzymes. You need these minerals. You need this protein. And so partake of it, but be thankful. Be grat have gratitude for the creature that's given itself for you in this way. Really. Really express the gratitude for that chicken or turkey or fish or whatever it might be, but also the same um, if you're if you're strictly a meat eater um, and the Kundalini tells you to start eating in a vegetarian way, have the same gratitude and respect for the plants that give their lives 
for you to have that nutrition. You know, just just because it's 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 not bipedal or quadrupedal or is is a creature that resembles us with two eyes, two arms, whatever, doesn't mean that it doesn't feel, that it doesn't have an appreciation for its own life. Well, it does. All plants do. Science has even proven that that plants respond uh, to emotional abuse in certain ways. Uh, If you read the uh, Secret Life of the Plant, I believe it's called, uh, uh, read that book, The Secret Life of Plants, or The Secrets of the Soil. And uh, you can look that up on Amazon. I'm pretty sure they're on there. Uh, you will see that that it has been proven, really beyond a doubt, that plants have emotional response. Uh, so realize this when you're eating that lettuce or that uh, salad or any of these things. And have the same level of gratitude for the plants that you have for the with any of the animals that you may consume. Have that gratitude. Feel that blessing. Feel that blessing of, 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 of the grace of their gift to you. And be be the person with, with gratitude for this, for this great gift. That is also a form of divine love. We live in a world that is very predatory, and it's predatory upon itself. Uh, there, there is a, a there is a pyramid of of predation. You know, the plants consume the minerals, uh, uh, the animals consume the plants, and then other animals consume other animals. And it's it's not negating a himsa. Uh, you, rarely do you see, I mean, sometimes you do, but rarely do you see an animal that is eating just for the joy of killing. You know, they, rarely do you see an animal kill another animal and then not consume it as food, just leave it there just to die. I mean, that is something that really people do. And, of course, the, I, I feel the Kundalini person will not want to do that and if you know if they're a person in their life that's been uh, you know somebody who would just kill for the thrill of killing that may change for them and nothing is wrong nothing is wrong it's just a uh, you have been changed uh, to express your life in a different way a different venue okay so as you have this divine, loving, transformative experience that is the kundalini, your food options may change. Your exercise options may change. The levels of love and the, and the, the horizon of love that you currently have will be broadened. Typically, I don't like to speak in absolutes, but I found that to be an absolute thing with the kundalini is that you will have a a broadened um, level of love. It will happen. It will occur. And, uh, you know, it's a good thing. It's a good thing to have this occur. Um, it may cause you to change your life in very, very uh, concrete ways. And your and your friends and family will notice this. So once again, you know, watch. Uh, you know, be be a little more uh, watchful about how you're expressing in front of your family and friends. I don't want them to to form the need to have an intervention for you. Watch how you how you express your love. You can express your love non-verbally. Okay. Uh, you may be a very verbal person, and you and you may want to express your love verbally, but maybe not to everyone in in your in your social circle. Certainly, if you look at the family, um, and, and I've already gone into that, so I'll just I'll just leave that as is. Uh, you can express your love to animals 
to your cat, to your dog, to your bird, to to the fish that you have, to the plants that you have all around you. You can exp- express your Kundalini divine love to all life, you know, with the possible ex- possible uh, exclusion of, of some people in your life. You and, and and really, that's not true because you can express your love for them, but just in a way that that they can have it without being afraid that that you're so amazingly different now. You can go out into the garden and you can bless the the, the garden flowers that you have and the weeds that you have and the insects that are there. You can see the bees that are going from bloom to bloom to bloom and pollinating, and you can thank them for the gift of pollination that they give your garden. You can go into the trees in the park and the grass in the park, and you can just be grateful. And this gratitude flows out from you into those organisms and helps them and and, and allows them to, to feel that sacred circuit uh, connected. Okay. You can go into giving a person help, especially a stranger, especially strangers. Uh, help that person across the street. Give that person some money. Give that person some food. Buy the groceries for for the person ahead of you in line if if, if your kundalini calls for you to do that. Buy that person lunch. Um, go out of your way to let that person in the car cut in front of you. Uh, allow those, those people to cross the road. Stop. Slow down for them. Slow down for that animal crossing the road. In no way go out of your way to kill anything arbitrarily. Okay? Do your very, very best to observe the sanctity of life around you uh, on a conscious level. Practice ahimsa uh, through the levels of intention. Do not intend to to kill anything for no reason. Uh, be grateful for the food that you eat. Really grateful for the food that you eat and the air that you breathe and the sun that shines down upon you and the stars that shine down upon you. Be grateful for all of the material uh, facets of your life. And then for the spiritual aspects of your life and for the mental knowledge that comes to you from the kundalini. You'll know things that you've never studied. And, and by all, all you know, scientific evidence, you should have no right to know. You will know. And have that gratitude for that. Have the gratitude for the kundalini itself as it changes you and, and allows you to expand far beyond the the levels that that you were currently at before you had the awakening. Have love for yourself, for that person you are becoming. So very important. So often, you know, we're able to love other people, but for ourselves, oh my gosh, you know, it just isn't going to work. So have that love for yourself. Have the gratitude for being who you are, being able to have kundalini that you're having right now, or or being able to know of kundalini so that you can you can work to refine yourself to have the awakening in this lifetime. Have that love, and let that love form a determination within you to accept more love and to give love and receive love, and give love, and receive love, and become that conduit of love uh, within within a kundalini context and outside of the kundalini context. For some of you that don't have the kundalini awakened yet, well, love is that platform. And if you look at the safeties on the kundalini awakening system, the number one dot com uh, website, Practice those safeties. You'll notice that those safeties are love-based. Devotion is love. Gratitude is love. Forgiveness is love. Tolerance is love. Patience is love. These are all aspects, facets of the jewel 
that love is, define love is. Okay. So we have reached the half hour mark here, and I'm gonna I'm open for anyone who might want to call in if this is actually going out to anyone. Um the number is three four seven nine three four zero zero two six and I will I will be here for a little bit if you're interested in calling up about this. I would like to to wish everybody a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Valentine's Day. I would like you to make every day a Valentine's Day. And Kundalini will will really begin to turn that into you. You know, it will enhance the romantic qualities of love. Yes, it will enhance the romantic qualities of love. But it will also enhance all the other aspects of love that I mentioned to you, tolerance, forgiveness, gratitude, healing is a form of love. So know this and and understand this. And as the song says, I I have a song that I sing. uh, Some of you may have noticed on, on the video, See Love in All Things. Well, really do that. See love in all things. See love in all creation. Being able to see love that way is also a form of divine love because you have expanded yourself to the to the level where you can see and appreciate love in all things. And this is a doorway, an invitation into the Kundalini. Now, let's see here. Um, I was going to play that song, but I'm not sure of the quality of the recording here. Um, I will go ahead and and um, and uh, terminate this, but I just want I want you to know that I love each and every one of you listening to this. I don't know you, I don't see you, I don't hear you, but I love you and I respect you, and I am grateful for your life on this world and for the gift the gift of the divine love that is flowing through you. And thank you for listening to this broadcast. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm supposed to tell you that uh, the other places that you can get this information are Kundalini Awakening Systems 1.com, and that's the number, number one. And then on the YouTube, the channel is Chrisom. And the number zero, Kundalini, because it looks like Chrisom O Kundalini, kind of an Irish thing. So Chrisom Zero Kundalini. And then on Facebook, Chrisom Kundalini. And then on Facebook also we have the groups of Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 on Facebook. And then we also have Kundalini Awakening Apostrophe. Uh, We have Kundalini Ashram. And we Kundalini healing, and then I have a private students group there. On uh, Yahoo, we have Kundalini Awakening Systems One at yahoogroups.com, and then on uh, uh, Google. Um, uh, let me let me come here. I have a new group on uh, Google Plus. And it's uh, called Kundalini Awakening with an apostrophe. And I'm also on the S period, O period, U period, L period, soul uh, network uh, that a person can reach. And that is that is at uh, onesoulspiritualnetwork.com. And, and my email address is K, as in Kundalini, fire for all. So kfireforall at yahoo.com and so once again I would like to thank you for listening and uh, hope to talk with you soon thanks